Okay, so uh, this one comes from fizz.org. Uh, actually, be careful making fun of this because this was sent to us by someone that's connected to the show. Does actually, he, you should make fun of he, it as much as possible. Uh, does he they, think? Does he really like the fifth state of matter that much? Would the, it would offend him if I made fun? I don't think so. I think he would okay. want to know your absolute honest opinion. <laughs> yes. Now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> it, that will be far easier than trying to think of something funny about the fifth state of matter. You don't believe this? No. It's I'm saying I'm not. I don't think I can be humorous about it. I was only joking about being humorous. Oh, okay. I'm only joking about being humorous, man. I'm not really going to. I mean, I might be able to, <laughs> but I don't know how, man. <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah. Uh, quantum fifth state of matter observed in space for the first time. So, what? It's been observed in the left shoe before, but not in space, right? Left shoe? Yeah, or somewhere else, like on Earth. Yeah. Okay. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it can be anywhere. It doesn't I'm have guessing. to be in your left shoe. <laughs> Scientists have observed the fifth state of matter and space for the first time, offering unprecedented insight that could help solve some of the quantum universe's most intractable conundrums, research showed Tuesday. Bose-Einstein Bose. condensate, yeah. Yeah, Bose-Einstein condensate. The existence of which was predicted by Albert Einstein, an Indian ma- Indian mathematician. <laughs> Nath Bose. Satran Satinath Bose. Uh, his last name's Bose. Almost <laughs> a cen- sorry, <laughs> almost a century ago, are formed when atoms of certain elements are cooled to near absolute zero, zero degrees Kelvin, or minus two hundred seventy three point one five degrees Celsius. Yeah, did we talk about it on the show once before about there being like below zero? Wasn't it when? Well, zero absolute zero was when even the atoms yeah. stop, like everything stops. Did we talk about that on the show? We may have. Okay. Yeah. D- yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is there's been 157 <laughs> of these things, man. Uh, at this point, the atoms become a single entity with quantum properties, wherein each particle also functions as a wave of matter. Uh, Bose-Einstein condensates straddle the line between the micro- macroscopic world governed by forces such as gravity and microscopic plane ruled by quantum mechanics. So, big shit acts different. The physics that affect large things is different than the physics that affect things at a microscopic level, okay? And I'm, I'm making sure I understand this, right? So, then there's this, they're looking for this unifying theory, because you can't use the same laws of physics like when you're figuring out how to make an airplane fly that you use to figure out how atoms fucking connect to each other and stuff. They don't act the same, right? Yeah, no. Uh-uh. No. And and I think, too, that because because when they go to absolute zero and they line up, they line up in a lattice kind of a formation, yeah. much like crystals do. Right, you know? right. And so when one area is being affected because they're lined up like that, another area will be affected down the way, right? Like okay. a, like a like they're all lined up. Like, like they're a connected sheet. like on a way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think that that I, that's what I got out of that. Okay. Was that they act as individual particles and also as a wave of matter because they're connected in that fashion. Uh, scientists believe BECs uh, contain vital clues to mysterious phenomena such as dark energy, the unknown energy thought to be behind the universe's accelerating expansion. Mm-hmm. But BECs are extremely fragile. The slightest interaction with the external world is enough to warm them past their condensation threshold. Yeah, that's dissidence. Dissidence is that background, um, sometimes what they call it, phantom energy. Yeah. Or phantom particles, okay. particles that just kind of pop into existence. And then, then they're gone. Yeah. yeah, but it causes enough heat that it can disrupt something that's at absolute zero because the idea, like you pointed out, is nothing's moving. So, so these, just the slightest increase in temperature gets things moving, maybe super slowly, but they will start moving around. Yeah. Um, I said, did I already read that? Okay, this makes it nearly impossible for scientists to study on Earth where gravity interferes with the magnetic fields required to hold them in place for observation. Interesting, too. On Thursday, a team of NASA scientists unveiled the first results from BEC experiments aboard the International Space Station where particles can be manipulated free from earthly constraints. Microgravity allows uh, us to confine atoms with much weaker forces since we don't have to support them against gravity. Robert Thompson uh, from the California Institute of Technology, Pasadena, told AFP. The research published in the journal 
Nature documents several startling differences in the properties of BECs created on Earth and those aboard the International Space Station. For one thing, BECs in terrestrial labs typically last a handful of milliseconds before disappearing. Aboard the ISS, the BECs lasted for more than a second, offering the team an unprecedented chance to study their properties. Very so nice. somehow this is going to give me crazy fast computers. Yes. You, you know what I'm saying? That like yes. you, you see what I mean? Like them studying this in space is somehow going to give us like ridiculously fast computers and and shit. Yeah, I would say yes. <laughs> Uh, microgravity also allowed the atoms to be na- manipulated by weaker magnetic fields, speeding their cooling and allowing clearer imaging. Okay. Uh, creating the fifth state of matter, especially within the physical confines of a space station, is no mean feat. First, bosons, particles that have an equal number of protons and electrons, are cooled to near absolute zero using lasers to clamp them in place. The slower the atoms move around, the cooler they become. Now that makes sense. If you could free, if you could like lock them in place, they'd be they'd be cold. Yeah, because they're not move. Okay, as they lose heat, a magnetic field is introduced to keep them from moving, and each particle's wave expands, cramming many bosons into a microscopic trap that causes their waves to overlap into a single matter wave, a property known as quantum degeneracy. Well, you could be a degenerate, but can you be a quantum degenerate? <laughs> Only out in space, I guess. <laughs> Uh, the second the magnetic trap is released in order for of scientists to study the condensate, however, the atoms begin to repel each other, causing the cloud to fly apart and the BEC to become too dilute to detect. It says, uh, most importantly, we conserve the atoms as they float entirely unconfined and hence unperturbed by external forces. Hmm. That's pretty interesting, man. So this was only theorized about and could only be created for very short periods of time in labs on Earth, yeah, and I'm, and like on airplanes and stuff, where like where they would fall, free fall, yeah. so that you you would be weightless. Yep, they would do it on that those two. Oh, like the vomit comets. Yeah, yeah, where they train astronauts yeah. and shit for weightlessness. But it, but it, but there haven't hardly been any studies on quantum effects in weightlessness, like true weightlessness. So this is like one of the first times I've ever been able to experiment at all. Okay. And I don't know. It didn't really, the article didn't really say that it meant anything in particular. Well, it's, but it's just said what that, they could do. Yeah. They could just got an unprecedented look into, yeah. Uh, the, phys- no conclusions, but they're, they're doing it, which they're is doing amazing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just like you said, freezing an atom and holding it suspended in a magnetic field where you don't have to, where the magnetic field doesn't have to be mm-hmm. that strong, because you're not fighting against gravity, right? Is is an interesting thing. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot more experiments. <laughs> Fucking boffins in space, man, changing everything. <laughs> They'll be building cyclotrons or something out there soon. In space, I would man. imagine.